Welcome! I am Stephen Philip Katz. I am a marriage and family therapist here in Hawaii. Welcome to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. And I have another marriage and family, a licensed marriage and family therapist. We're all called licensed as of the last legislature. And uh, her name is Melinda Timmons. Welcome, yeah. Melinda. Thank you, Steve. So she's in private practice right here in Honolulu, and you've been since 2007, is that right? Mm-hmm. No, that's 2010. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. I think okay. it's about 2010, 2011, oh, right around so you then. said seven years. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. So where are you from? I am from Seattle, Washington. I've been here since I was 20, so a really long time. Three years. <laughs> <laughs> Not. <laughs> Thank you. So um, mm -hmm. you were talking to me before in the green room, uh -huh. as they call it, uh, about the way technology is influencing relationships mm -hmm. here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And you told me a beautiful story, of, a personal story <laughs> that sort of very well captured the essence of this. Uh -huh. Could you tell us that? Okay, so um, I was telling Steve, I was telling you that um, I was married since I was 20. For the last 20 years or so, uh, well, I was married about 26 years from the age of 20, which took me into my 40s. And then I got divorced, and I was just kind of working and doing my job and working super hard um, to raise, finish raising my kids, the last one even. And um, I was dared by my 80-something-year-old father to get out there in the world and start dating. He, you know, he said, look, I'm, I'm in my late 80s. You could have a super long life. You should get out there. Um, so on a dare, I did get out there um, online because the therapist that I was working with at the time, because I'm a therapist, we like to do our own work, you know, um, dared me to. She said, okay, not just any old dating thing, but you need to do this online. So mm -hmm. as a dare, I tried it for one month and um, I found it to be this whole new world um, because you don't date anymore the same way. It's all about instant messaging, it's about texting, it's not about phone calls or waiting for the phone call, it's about technology. Mm -hmm. And thus also a lot about control, you know. Who has the control? Whoever sent the last message. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whoever sent the last message. Um, yeah. So, um, so how is that different? How is that different? I mean, you know, when I was a, a young woman in the late 80s, you just... Um, Meets, you meet people at work, uh -huh. at school, whatever. You know? Live, in yeah, person. Yeah, live, in person. And then there you are, like, sifting through, um, for me, you know, over a thousand different kind of things online and trying to figure out who might be telling the truth, might be, uh, you know, actually the age that they say they are or um, actually available, you know. So you sift through that enough to go meet someone for coffee or something. And then you have to, okay, well... You're 60, you're not 40, you know? Um, so yeah, it's just kind of interesting doing that. And then once you're actually seeing someone or even after one day, um, then the texting begins, even in my age bracket, in the 40-somethings. Uh -huh. And it's not like a phone call, it's like a text. Oh, nice to see you, it was really nice to see you. And then there's, you know, day after day, a little text back and forth and um, banter, and then they fall off the face of the earth. And so this became a little bit of a professional curiosity for me in uh -huh. terms of technology, texting, relationships, um, also including social networking, um, kind of interesting. What's lost in the text message that you don't get with I think, a live person? I think a lot. So unless you are like my psycholinguist friend who studies this, the psychology of language, a lot, a lot. Um, you can lose body language. You can lose uh, intonation of your voice. Like right now you're nodding your head and we have eye contact and I can see that you're agreeing with me. But if you were, text, you were texting back and forth, maybe you would leave out that affirmation that you're nodding. How do you do that in a text? not right. oh I'm hearing you know I'm hearing you so um, I'm pretty good at that because our language pretty much as therapists is communication and usually most therapists were pretty good at translating that to the written form I mean we figure out emojis pretty quick because we're emotions based but other people out there are not so quick to learn this stuff um, so I've worked uh, you know I got curious when I was actually dating out there um, 
and I got more curious with my clients too. My 30, 40, 50 something clients who are struggling in relationship, whether it's um, with a partner, potential partner, just the dating game, or even family, kids, daughters, sons. Um, it can be a big struggle. So I know my, <laughs> my our audience is dying to know, yes. how did it work out for you? Um, strangely, because I actually met somebody, and I never even paid for the service. I, um, <laughs> I was just committed to doing it the free month, the one month of the Match.com thing, and um, lo and behold, I met somebody, and um, turns out he's in technology, in the field of technology, so he loves to, to keep things like messaging and texting and so forth. Um, but yeah, he, I met him there, and that was it. So the communication worked. <laughs> well, it worked because he's really, really good at it. Uh -huh. So um, for the most part, he's quite good at it, and because he was honest and he went that extra mile, you know, like... He took days off to meet me consecutively. Every so do you week. still text each other a lot? We do. We yeah. text each other a lot. And he's in also a facility where he works where he cannot answer his personal phone or anything. So it's going to be email. We can email, we can each, email other. each other. We can't take a phone in there, but we can uh -huh. email. So yeah, it continues on the messaging relationship. So with us, it works. But initially, I had to figure out a lot of things. I mean, as much as I like language and communication, um, you know, I talked to my friend, Dr. Amy Schaefer, who's a psycholinguist quite a bit, about psychology and language. And um, I learned things from her that I didn't know, like, you know, that a period can be too final, say, uh -huh. you know, when you're texting someone. So there's a lot of talk um, about leaving off the period because Three it can dots. be... <laughs> well, the ellipsis is so overused. I mean, because uh -huh. an ellipsis is leaving a lot of room for, you know, it's very vague. Uh -huh. How do you figure that out, you know? And it's very overused. Smiley face is so overused. So just skip it. I no, don't know. no period I mean, or comma? <laughs> skip the period um, and maybe figure out how to do something pictorial or with your language. Um, how can I make this interesting for this person? And so that's where the control comes in. Because in the past, you know, we meet people live, we, um, whether it's in a restaurant or at work or whatever, we have this mode of communication where we have eye contact, body language. I can even smell, you know, smell okay, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot, you know, and whether or not someone's leaning forward. Um, and in that texting language, yeah, how do you Yeah, that does so much. That? When you did that, yeah. you know, it just changes everything, yeah, right? Oh, it does. she likes me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You, yeah. you don't get that in yeah. texting or even, She's in, interested. even in email. You don't right, get that. Right. But usually in emails, that's a format where we tend to take more time, typically. Yeah, we you can work form. on it, massage it before you send it out. Right. But I think that's important to realize, too, that especially in relationships, like dating relationships, people are massaging. They are check If they're paying attention, the good ones, uh -huh. they are paying attention to, okay, how much time do I let lapse before I get back to her? Uh, or to him. Uh, so it's kind of like the old dating thing in that way. Uh, maybe I should wait till Wednesday or Tuesday. Yeah, well, and a lot of guys blow it that way too. <laughs> 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 right, so that become you know, it came into my practice. So I'm right. actually... Right, yeah, I find that in my practice. You do too. Yeah, oh, what I get in my practice all the time is, mm -hmm. I got to show you what he wrote. Now look at this conversation. <laughs> and then they give me like pages and pages. Oh, no, I get that Look too. at what he yeah. said. Do you read it? No. I said, can you, you give have me a synopsis, please? <laughs> you know, I mean, because, you know, you don't want to take up the whole session. But sometimes yeah. I do read it if it's really impacting Because it them. seems really important to them. Yeah. Like, I can't believe what he said. Read this. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Sometimes I do. And then whole yeah. arguments happen through text. Yes. And the trouble with that is if you say things that are very hurtful, things you didn't mean. It's written. They're there forever. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so when I was starting to date my boyfriend, um, sometimes I would just say, call me, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, exclamation. But now we know each other, you know, well enough. We've been together long enough that I can see that if he's leaving out punctuation or emojis or whatever, okay, he's busy, probably doing something for me or my kids typically. You know, it's not something anymore where I get anxious about it, but I used to. And my clients, I can tell that they're very anxious, you know, yeah. um, especially the ones at 30s, 40s, 50s. And I don't mean early 30s because that's kind of, there's a cutoff there. My own uh -huh. kids are late teens into uh -huh. their 20s and a stepdaughter who's 31, and they get it. They get this mm -hmm. language. They're all very, very facile with it. It's the people in their late 30s, I find, and onward. Uh -huh. They're like, what? Yeah. I don't understand this. 
can you, can, Mel, can you help me? I don't get it, you know? And so we actually practice sometimes in office, okay, how can I get a response from this woman? You know, how can I do that? Um, and so an individual might um, say, hey, what are you doing Sunday night? Um, I'd like to get together. And she'll say, I'm busy. And then he'll text back, okay, oh, that doesn't work. So in office, then we practice a little bit, even texting live, you know, wow. like not, not saying, hey, my therapist is here or whatever, <laughs> but he'll say, so, you know, what are you doing Sunday night? Now that's interesting. Is that honest? Is it honest? If not you don't say, hey, I'm there. <laughs> no, I think that's face saving. I mean, you know, <laughs> shame, shame saving. Yeah, just a little practice. So, um, and I'll but have, there's a real person on the other side. Yeah, but I'll have just a brief one. I'll have, <laughs> and I'll say, well, she says she's busy or she doesn't know. And I'll say, hey, why don't you ask her when she would like to get together? When is a good day? And you really want to spend some time with her. So yeah. you'll help you'll help him just compose briefly. a text. Just briefly, yeah. It yeah. reminds me of, the, what's that, that play uh, with the guy with the big nose who can't get a date? And oh. Yeah, somebody uh, write. Cyrano, de Cyrano yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, and what's that line is like, speak for yourself, so and so. Yeah. Or, yeah, whether he's writing poetry for the other one and yeah. all this stuff. Right? I think the deal is, is that some people do not glom on, onto this mode of communication yeah. and they need a little help. And that's helpful. You know, if, yeah. if you're a therapist that's taken time, and as a 40-something, I had to take time to really learn about it, to study, to learn, to be able to help people. Um, I've communicated with my own kids via text ever since my oldest daughter was in college because she wouldn't answer my calls. Right. So that was helpful. I get couples in where actually they're having Facebook dramas. You know, married adult couples that will post things about one another, maybe when they're just happened to me. Angry yeah. at one another. Yeah. Post and this very, you know, embarrassing stuff. Yeah. about each other yeah and how do you deal with that and then families see and friends and then they'll hate on the other partner because then now they know and that's just a big no-no right, right. You know? I have a client who was just involved in a new relationship she's mm -hmm. in love mm -hmm. she went traveling she met a guy she's mm -hmm. all excited about it mm -hmm. and then her mother who lives thousands of miles away mm -hmm. contacted this guy who thought this guy would be perfect for her daughter yeah. so she gives the guy her daughter's phone number and he mm -hmm. sends her this long text saying, your mother gave me blah, 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 this is who I am, yada, yada, yada. And now she, the, the woman looks at it, what do I do? It's like, I'm involved with this guy and should I not reply? Should I oh, tell no. him I'm involved? <laughs> you know, what if the thing I'm involved with now doesn't work? You know, uh, should, should I save it as a backup? What should uh, I say to the guy? Oh my goodness. <laughs> So completely triangulating in. Triangulating electronically. Electronically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So big family, When do I send a picture? Big family disasters have happened that way through social media. And also adult couples unfriending one another when they're angry. Let's hold it for after the break. Don't... Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Aloha. This is Reg Baker with Business in Hawaii. We're a show that broadcasts every Thursday at 2 o'clock. We would love to hear from you, and you can reach us in several different ways. We have a hotline that you can call in at 415-871-2474, or you can email us at thinktechhawaii.com, or you can tweet us at thinktechhi. Looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you on our next show. Aloha. Welcome back. I am still Stephen Katz, and this is still Melinda Timmons, licensed mm -hmm. marriage and family therapist. It's so mm -hmm. nice to have somebody in the same business. So you were saying something about a family where there was some issue about somebody got angry? More than one family, where uh -huh. um, there would be a couple and maybe um, even married couples that will unfriend each other on Facebook oh. or other family members, maybe a child or a sister, and then it's it's public 
You know, they, so when, when you unfriend somebody, the person knows the it? The person knows. Oh, you can it's like a slap in the face. Yes, yes. And it's um, in this age of technology, it's very painful even to uh -huh. people. And um, maybe you don't signify that to the rest of your family or your friend group, but that individual knows. And then maybe they retaliate. Yeah. And then maybe there's nasty things said or even a picture that has some nuances of negativity. Um, so I... This is part of therapy now. This is yeah, part I of had a couple where mm -hmm. somebody posted a picture and that all you see is an arm around the shoulder. Yeah. And there's this whole debate in the family. Is that a guy's arm? <laughs> <laughs> Whose arm is that? Is right? that his arm? <laughs> <laughs> That's not his arm. He's got a ring. Yeah. He's, well, really? What's the ring? <laughs> yeah. And then I remember mm -hmm. uh, when my daughter was a little younger, mm -hmm. she was seeing somebody online. So they're messaging, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. And like, I really had trouble with that because she mm -hmm. would talk about it as if they were dating. Mm -hmm. And when she, they broke up, <laughs> <laughs> she was distraught. Mm. And I really had a hard time being empathetic. It's like, you've never spent a minute with this guy in the presence of this other person. You've never mm -hmm. touched him. Mm -hmm. What are you so upset about? It's like, oh, I'm like a dinosaur. Yeah. Well, yeah. in one way, I see that, you know, historically there were huge love relationships. Um, they were just letters back and forth. If you think, you right. know, 100 years ago or whatever and beyond, um, and there's the notion of picture brides coming here to Hawaii. Right. Um, that was more probably functional as opposed mm -hmm. to a love relationship. But there were love letter relationships. And but they were a lot slower. A lot slower. <laughs> and I think people fell in love via the word, the written word, but if you think about it, what we know about today, oxytocin, uh -huh. which is the brain chemical we all emit thing. during physical contact. Right. So where is that? So if you're, say, dating... Oh, so the oxytocin doesn't happen from something you're reading. No, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's about physical contact, uh -huh. you know, sexual pheromones, hormones, all of that stuff. So, okay, how does that work with these long-distance text, not just texting, but online relationships, um, I imagine they're probably shocked at times, you know, if they finally get together physically and there's no, like, chemistry. Yeah. You know. So, but they send pictures, so. They <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the same. Can we just, like, emit those pheromones, like, across the, the, the wires or the wow, internet? Wow, you the, could figure that you know? one out. <laughs> We'd all be like We just ants. forget about, like, dating altogether. We can just get online and, and Very go safe for sex. it. But, yeah, safe, 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 <laughs> safe sex. <laughs> so the other subject that I was curious mm -hmm. about was mm -hmm. you work with kids. 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 Absolutely, and, four and up. Uh, mm -hmm. And you mentioned something about tantrums. Yeah, I mean, I think tantrums are relevant whether they're four years old or 40 or 60. Um, it's simply... So grown-ups can have tantrums. Absolutely. Frustration, anger, feeling out of control, um, and then it can come out in behavior. It looks a little different, hopefully, with right, grown-ups and right. children, though sometimes not if we think of someone really losing it and maybe they hit a wall or maybe they start yelling if they're an adult, right? Right. Sure, I have clients who punch walls. It's all about control, right? They're feeling out of control, and they want some control. They're es essentially seeking attention. And if it's not dangerous, um, let's say a typical relationship scenario with an adult might be um, maybe um, the partner is um, starting to slam doors or cabinets or they're huffing or something, and they're walking out very what we would call passive aggressive behavior, right? Mm, um, not it's, so passive. It's, aggress it's aggressive, <laughs> yeah. but it's not coming out and they're not actually hitting having, the other person. Right, or having the conversation loudly, ah, say. Okay. But they're doing all of these other things. Right. Um, I would recommend, just like I would with a four year old, to the parents that you, hey, when you're done with that, let me know. I'm but that can enrage, especially if it's an adult you're talking right. to. It's like, don't talk to me like that. You have don't tell me to go to the other room. I'm not a three-year-old. Don't, you know. But if you engage with them, does it not perpetuate the behavior? Right. So how do you get out of it? I mean, I typically, rec if it's an adult, I typically, rec typically recommend that they go ahead and leave the space. And it, that's if they're the, um, the, qu the quiet partner, the one that's not having the fit. Right, the temper tantrum. we call the temperate, the rather temperate, than the intense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so I typically recommend they go right, ahead so and I leave the space. Right, so I work with a couple like that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. 
<sighs> the temperate needs to take a break. Mm -hmm. So he says, I need to take a break. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go take a walk mm -hmm. around the block. I'll be mm -hmm. back in a half an hour. Mm -hmm. She says, no, you can't take a break. You can't <laughs> leave. If you want, you can go sit in the other room for a while, but you can't leave the house. Control. Because for her, maybe she's got issues mm -hmm. of abandonment. Mm -hmm. So leaving the house is for him is like leaving her forever. Mm. Right? So that's about therapy and about negotiating, right? Well, she doesn't see it that way. Mm. She says, "This, if you want to be with me, you can't mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, her behavior is abusive to him. Because, right. Yeah. And she can't help it. Mm -hmm. Right? It's this, uh, I hate you, don't leave me mm -hmm. thing. Right? Very kind mm -hmm. of borderline. Mm -hmm. And... How, you know, and, and if you would blame her, mm -hmm. you know, if you're the therapist in session and mm -hmm. you turn around and say, how do you think it makes him feel mm -hmm. when you, t when you mm -hmm. yell at him? Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're blaming me. It's my <laughs> fault, right? Yeah. No, it's him. He wouldn't answer the phone. Well, let's not get away from the subject. It's mm -hmm. his problem. Why wouldn't he answer the phone? Well, if there's traits of personality disorder, they're typically, gonna, typically not going to have You're telling insight. me I have personality disorder? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm talking to Steve right now. I would never say that to a client. I uh, wouldn't go there with a client. Uh, with. Uh, so, yeah, so what do you do with a client? Yeah, so I have this couple in my office. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily bring up borderline traits or personality disorder traits. I would negotiate what could feel comfortable to both of them to take a break. And then also educate them about um, the fact that for most of us, we're going to feel like our heart is going to beat faster. Um, we're going to have all kinds of biological symptoms and feel really uncomfortable if our partner is yelling and having a tantrum. Right. Right. So, but you can't tell her she's having a tantrum because she'll um, get really defensive. Not in the initial. You know, that comes from <laughs> a lot of insight and first. relationship building, rapport yeah. building, and maybe eventually we can actually call it what it is. And I, I think that's typically an aha moment if someone is capable of insight. If they know that they're having a tantrum, then they, ah, uh, okay. You know, that can be helpful. Then you can teach them skills. And those are the best clients of all to work with. Uh -huh. The ones that are exciting that can actually, you know, turn a corner if they can develop some insight around that. It takes yeah. a long time. Yeah, it can. Yeah. yeah. And then the poor temperate. <laughs> <laughs> if they can hang in there long enough. If it, yeah, and I always wonder, why, why are mm -hmm. they there? I think that it's fascinates typically me. when it's gotten it's to that point. It's not like she suddenly got that way. It's codependency. I mean, yeah. to me, yeah. Yeah, so what does is, what is the calm one get out of it? Needed. It, feeling needed, uh, typically. Maybe they right, can... Right, because she can't yeah, stand it if he leaves her. Care for that person enough that maybe they'll get better, they'll change, maybe they'll have a turn. Mm. Once in a while it happens. So it's but very she, important yeah. for that person to feel needed. Yeah. I think so. She needs me to be mm -hmm. here, even though mm -hmm. she's abusive <laughs> or vice versa. And I, and I am talking about psychologically abusive. I never recommend that anyone right. physically, no, not with physically stay abusive. in. Right. But I also think it's important that people that are experiencing those kind of tantrums in their relationship be allowed to take leave of that, <laughs> you know? Right. It, even for an hour or two, you know, like, wow, this is not cool for me. It's not comfortable for me. Yeah. Even in our relationships in our family, you know, maybe someone's a mom or dad. Also, it's very typical that someone will have a parent, an, an adult who has a parent that... Um, oh, sure, that's throws, where they learned it. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. And part of the learning process is saying, hey, I am not comfortable with that, you know, mom, um, I'm going to come back later. Don't leave! <laughs> you can't leave! Yeah, I want to spend time with you, Mommy, when you're feeling good, okay? Yeah, this is a really hard conversation, so I'm going to let me know when you're feeling better, and, and then we can talk. But you always said that, and you never come back, and we <laughs> never get to talk about it. I always come back, Mom. I'll always come back for you. So a lot of good therapy is good language, teaching people and coaching people with and, good language. Yeah, and I mm -hmm. see what you're doing is you're trying to create trust. Mm -hmm. and that's a big deal. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm, I'm always amazed, like, mm -hmm. you know, there's some couples you have to wonder, like, mm -hmm. what's, what's keeping them together? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah.
And that's the question I ask. I mean, that's one of my more solution-focused questions. So what's, right. what's kept you in for this long, you know? Right. And oh, but <laughs> it, it, when she's sweet, she's so sweet, and the sex is so good. Yeah, I get all <laughs> kinds of responses. Um, and with really great couples that are really hanging in, sometimes, they, sometimes they are very touching. Like uh, one of my couples says, you know, she's the only person that I could be with for 24 hours and not get bored. I could right. be on a desert island and be fine for days on it, weeks on end with this person. I will not get bored. And that's cool to hear. So they're so still they hanging like in. So they like the drama. Well, I mean, I think they're hanging in because they're that stimulated by one another intellectually, emotionally, and in uh -huh. every way. And they need to work out on, work on other things. Which brings me to another question. Mm -hmm. The whole, th is there such a thing, you know, people mm -hmm. say that, we're soulmates, we were meant to uh -huh. be together, this is the only person for me. Hmm. What, what do you think? Hmm <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, I think um, there could be, for example, I'm a very straight person, but I have a couple of friends that I consider, you know, girlfriends that I mm -hmm. consider soulmates. Like they will always, I'm an only child, they'll always be my, kind of my heart sisters. Mm. So Is that important? You mentioned that you're an only child. Yeah. Is that something that you always ask your clients, like where they are in the sure. sibling? Eventually I want to know. Stuff? I want to know that stuff. Like how, how does that impact you, like being an only child? Um, mostly, you know, out here in Hawaii, kind of raising my family, my closest girlfriends became my sisters, my children's aunties, um, and still are today. Ah. That's wonderful. I think women do mm -hmm. that. Excuse me for, you know, generalizing. Yes. <laughs> women, the girlfriend thing is, mm -hmm. is something I've always been jealous of as a mm -hmm. guy, that it's really hard for guys to be that close. That close, yeah, and maintain yeah. it despite maybe continents separating you or whatever. You I know. once mentioned that to a woman, and she said, mm -hmm. oh, duh, like, you know any <laughs> men that exchange each other's panties? <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that with my friends. But you know, um, here yeah, these don't fit. You want them? <laughs> gesturing. One of my kids over there. One of my closest friends. One of those soulmates. You know, who's her godmom, her uh -huh. elected godmom, not a Christian godmom, uh -huh. but someone. She said, "Okay, that's the person I want to take care of me when you're not around." Goes and fetches her from college because wow. my daughter, my youngest daughter, is on in college on the mainland, and she'll fetch her for Thanksgiving. She'll go up to her if she's having a bad semester or whatever. I mean, you can't replace that. And I don't have sisters. They're telling me. Yeah. I hate to stop you, but oh, we've got to okay. wrap it up. Oh, the wow. time has okay. flown by. And thank you, Melinda thank Timmons. Thank you for having me. Have a great practice. Thank you. And I hope you join us again sometime. Yeah. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.